Well, thank you all for being here once more this Sunday. This is uh, our conclusion of a, actually it's a conclusion of a four-part study of the life of Elijah presented in three weeks. So uh, thank you for bearing with uh, slightly longer sermons than you might be used to. This one, I think we're back on schedule. It's a good one to listen and reflect and look for applications of what's going on here today. So let's pray to begin. Gracious Lord, thank you for this opportunity where I might speak and open your word. But Lord, hide me behind your cross so that what everyone hears and, and what you show to them in their hearts will be what the message that they need to hear that will be pleasing to you, that will help them apply this lesson to their lives today and tomorrow and here and in this church and in our community we pray in jesus name amen well this lesson we pick up a new character and it is elijah's protege or servant elisha and you know, we study names that come up in the Hebrew because it's kind of important when they do appear to, um, to take note of them. Just like we mentioned that Elijah is a compilation of two Hebrew words, Eli, my God, and Jah, which is a short form of Jehovah. So when we say Elijah, we're declaring that my God is Jehovah. Not so much what the King Ahab and Queen Jezebel were doing, because they were declaring, we're going to serve a new God. We're going to be serving Baal. And the nation went after them. They liked some of the offerings that they were able to get with this new form of worship. It wasn't so demanding, but it wasn't right. And that's when God raises prophets, we mentioned, was to set things right. And so that he might declare his word, and that's his sole job. It's not to interpret God's word, it's just to declare it. And, and Elijah was doing this. And we see that Elijah was, I was trying to make an illustration of how important Elijah was in his day. And it's, it's not a fair comparison, but when I was a little kid, I got my first dose of superhero comic books. Superman was basically the one was the most popular at that time because I was, I'm a baby boomer. And uh, comic books were great. They were like five cents and you'd get them and uh, you'd read them and you'd cherish them and read them over and over. Elijah was a superhero, a super person, but he wasn't so super, he was just like us, we're told in James. He did all of these things because he was just doing his job. He was telling people what God said God would do, and sure enough, God did it. But he did things that no one had ever done up until that, this day. He stopped it from raining for 40 days. Then on God's cue, it began to rain. He raised a widow's son from the dead. And before that, he performed the miracle where God provided bread and oil for them every day of the long drought, which lasted years. Miracles, and when that was our theme last week, was miracles, miracles. Because you gotta believe in miracles when you see them happening. And it was a good prelude for today's text because you have to have a lot of nerve in today's world when you preach about a prophet being taken up into heaven in a fiery chariot with flames because people are gonna say, you really believe that? And then there's also this in the prophets, we're going to learn more that it's prophesied that Elijah will return in the last book of the Old Testament, in Micah, in the last chapter, in the last two verses. 
you read it, it says that, um, I really should read it, but I, I, I didn't bring my right glasses today, so a lot of this I'm just gonna have to do from memory. But as the way I remember it, it, it said, there will, be t there will be a time when Elijah would come back. It would be the time when the parents are fighting and striving with the children of the parents. And boy, I stood up and took note of that. Because ever if you wanted a time to say, when would, might that be appropriate? It might be, maybe not so much today, but it is approaching that, I believe, when you can see in communist countries, parents, uh, children of parents are reporting their parents and the gulags come and execute them. That's when, when children don't even regard their parents. And in those days, there will be a need. And that's when God will raise prophets again and God said, the two prophets will come again. But this whole question of how do we interpret God's word, spiritually or literally, is a challenge. Because if you say, oh, we, every word from the word of God is, is literally taken, we're gonna lose our witness to a lot of people. But if we say that, well, it's all spiritual, we're gonna lose the blessing that God may have, have for in store for us. I say, why can't it be both? Why can't it be a spiritual lesson that God will find the time and the place to fulfill these words literally as well? And I think that is possible. And let's see if I can get anything out of these glasses to help this move along. Another thing about Elijah is why he's a super person. There's only one other person beside him that is taken up into heaven before they die. And that goes back to the seventh generation from Adam. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalo, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. And it was Enoch that was the seventh generation. He was the father of Methuselah who lived the longest period of time on the earth, but he never died. He was taken by God. And this all works out into why God would do this. And I think it has something to do with those um, last two witnesses that are, that are gonna make an appearance. And yes, Jesus did say that, you, you say, when is Elijah coming? And I'm telling you, look at John the Baptist, he has already come. And that is true in a spiritual sense. And I want us to embrace that spiritual sense because I think we can step into the shoes of Elijah in many ways as well in foretelling God's word, not foretelling. Now, we're not telling the future. We're just saying this is what God had said. Um, but there are going to be two witnesses. If you want to read in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verses 3 to 13, there's going to be two witnesses that return to the earth right before the, the seventh trumpet is blown. And that, that's when when all catastrophes and hardships and break forth. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to witness again. And the, uh, the Revelation says that they're going to have a sign. And one of the signs is that they can say it's not going to rain and it won't rain. Just like Elijah did back when he was on earth. They're also going to have power to um, have fire come down from heaven and burn up anyone who tries to hurt them. Just like Elijah called on God to have fire come down from heaven. There's a lot of signs here that make a lot of people say that this might be Elijah. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying that there's a lot of 
consistency even with the spirit of Elijah because this is what Elijah did and God said it will need to be done again because the days will be so challenging in that time that God's word needs to be foretold. That was a tough job Elijah did in his life and he was faithful. So now we set the stage for um, Elisha. And I was, I was gonna tell you what his name met, meant and then I had left off. Elisha, as far as my memory goes, because I can't find it in my notes. Elisha means my God, Eli, Shah, which is a form of will provide. My God provides for me. And that's important too, because how can somebody fill the shoes of Elijah that was a superhero unless you have a little help, unless you know that God is going to be there with you to help you in all that you do. Now here's where you start making applications. You know, yeah, I had, I've had to fill shoes for some people. I've had to step up and be chairperson of a committee when we didn't have enough help. And there's never enough help in a small church. It always seems that we're doing everything. But God is your provider. If God is calling you to a task, God will empower you and God will provide for everything you need to do the task. And yeah, it's gonna be like Elijah had teamwork. Elijah and Elisha were a team. Elisha was learning and Elijah was doing the work. But that's the way it is for a while when you're new to a committee. You get some hand-holding from, hand from other peoples, from pastors, from others who served on the committee to help you out. And then God speaks to you and puts, gives you a way that you're going to do this job differently, but it will be pleasing to God because that's the way God impressed to you. Another thing that we can start thinking about is, when is it ready for me to step up and take over? If you read this chapter, Elisha knows. God has already told him that his master is going to be taken from him. He didn't know how, but he knew that he was going to be alone. And so he wanted to know, Master, am I ready to take over? And he was kind of discouraged by Elijah. Elijah was telling him, yeah, I'm going to go to this place, but you don't have to come. And Elisha was saying, well, maybe I'm being tested. So every time he protested, no, as the Lord lives, I will go with you. And he went from place to place to place. And then finally, he had enough gumption to, to tell, ask his master, Master, am I ready? Will I be able to ask you that when you leave, you, you will impart to me a double blessing of what you have? And Elijah, Elijah knows it doesn't work that way. It's God that gives you everything. I can't give you anything, but God will provide for you. And then it came to the mantle that, that uh, he wanted to get passed on. The mantle is a coat that, that uh, people wore. It's, it's like their outer garment. And of course, when the prophet had his mantle on, he, had, he was wearing the office of the mantle. That's why we wear clergy collars, which mine is coming out. Um, get this back in. Uh, Got to throw, throw down the mantle here pretty soon. But it, it indicates the office that you're, you're working through. And again, Elisha wanted a sign that he would receive this mantle. And, but he's really asking, am I ready to assume this role? And he says, well, I can't tell you that, but, but I'll give you this thing. If you can see this whole vision through, you see me rising into, into, ascending into heaven, then you can know for certain that God is with you 
and that you can do the task. I'm paraphrasing it, but you reread it and reread it because this is the days of Elijah. And I stole this le lection. It's really next week's lection. And I want to let, let the pastor be able to preach that if she wants to. And it would be a double blessing for you, just like Elisha asked for a double blessing. It would be a double blessing for you if that you can hear this sermon again. It won't be the same. It never will be the same because it'll be a different person using a different perspective and you'll get to hear things that you didn't hear before. So I'm not, I'm not trying to steal it. I'm just trying to present it because it's timely today because we're here sitting as Elisha's and we're waiting for our pastor to be taken from us. Next week, he'll, he'll be preaching, Pastor Calvin will be preaching in a new church. And we will have a new clergy person supporting us in this church, preaching to us. So this is the apropos time to realize that we have to look up and see that we're not losing our superhero. But what we're gaining is God being with us to support us so that we can step up and fill in where it's needed. And it's especially appropriate because we're going to enter this new collaborative parishes. And our church was not appointed a clergy, a pastor. But it has, is going to receive pastoral support from the collaborative parish. So when we need it, need help, it will be helped. But we know, if we've listened to the annual conference this week, we know that we have to do our part. We have to collaborate with the other churches, with other ministers. We have to assume that mantle ourselves so that we might believe and trust in God's miracles and God's power to make us able to do the work that is needed for what this church is called for. How can we continue in our mission and ministry with this new challenge? We can. Elijah survived at the Brook Kareth. Elijah survived with the widow and her son when they were failing in hunger. Elijah brought the son back to life. Elijah cast down the idols on Mount Carmel. Elijah survived his depression, his burnout, because he thought he just couldn't go on anymore. God is our provider. So look to God, pray to God, know that God will provide everything we need to do this task with God's help. You know, a lot of times ministers are asked to make commitments to things. John Wesley demanded it from his, um, I guess his, um, what would you call it? His people in his class, his people that were serving. And he put a test to them and he asked these traditional questions. And almost every question is not, yes, I will do it. It's by God's grace, I will do it. Well, that's our answer. That's Elisha's answer. By God's grace, by God's provision, because God will supply us. We can assume our mission and ministry here at Great Hill so I would say welcome our new ministers that come to support us, especially next week when Susan Chapango will be come here to preach to us. Listen, rejoice, whatever sermon that comes forth, look for applications, how we can apply it to our needs and the fulfillment of our needs. God says if we ask anything according to his will, it will be granted. We certainly have needs for ourselves, our families, and our church. 
Now is the time to be asking. Now is the time to assume the prophetic role, to grab that mantle from Elijah, to claim it as our own, our church's own, and just go forth from that time. Um, They say when you come to the end of the sermon, that's the time to pray and, and close out. So let's pray and close out. Gracious Lord, I hope we've covered all the lessons from this reading, this text in the Old Testament, which was written for our instruction, that we can make applications that we need today, tomorrow, this year, that we will not be burned out, that we will constantly be refreshed by the springs of Kareth, that we'll be, we will be fed by your word at, the, at your table, that we will have our co-laborers support, supporting us, other ministers supporting us, a connection as a cooperative parish that will support us, help us to embrace this, to work with this, to find out all the things that we don't know how it will work, we'll leave that in your hands, knowing that you will provide. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.